Well, Deputy Secretary of State James Steinberg has just announced, or just announced on February 5th, in Tbilisi, Georgia, that Richard Holbrook, the U.S. Special Representative for both Afghanistan and Pakistan, will be headed to Georgia, quote, shortly. Now, the reasoning here? Well, one part might be to take up Georgia's offer to allow the U.S. to use it as a supply route to Afghanistan. But more importantly, this is to finalize the deployment of 750 Georgian troops to the Helmand province in March. You see, they were specially requested by General David Petraeus himself. And this will be the largest per capita contribution to Afghanistan of any country other than the U.S. But one of the largest questions that really comes into play here is whether this will mean that the U.S. will once again start providing Georgia with lethal weapons, something that has been halted since the Russian and Georgian conflict in 2008. Well, here to discuss it with me, I have the author of the book, Uncertain Democracy, U.S. Foreign Policy and Georgia's Rose Revolution, Lincoln Mitchell. Uh, he's in our studio in New York. Uh, Professor Mitchell, thank you for joining us. Uh, my first question to you, I guess, is... Why do you think Richard Holbrook is making this trip? What's really well, behind think, it? Sorry. I, I don't think he's. I, I don't think he's there to nail down the deal. I think he's there to discuss the deal. Um, you know, this is an op This is a proposal that a foreign leader has made. There are some pluses. There are some minuses. There's a. If we decide we want to do it, there's an extraordinary amount of details uh, legally and also between the two states that need to be worked out. I think right now we're in the discussion phase about that. And by the deal, do you mean uh, the deal for, to use Georgia as a supply route or uh, in terms of a weapons yeah. deal? Yeah, I mean, I mean that. I mean, no, 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 the supply route. If that's, if that's, so that's, a, that's an offer that, that Saakashvili has made, and that's something we need to just determine if we want to do here in the U.S. The our government needs to determine if we want to do that. Before we determine what, if we want to do that, we have to look into what it is, what the offer is, how that would work, how that would affect the politics of the region, what the, what the costs associated with, with that would be. So I think this trip is to discuss it. It's not to, you're not going to walk away with, you're not going to end this trip with an agreement either way. Okay, but don't you think that it would be convenient if within this trip before uh, more G Georgian troops are being sent out to Afghanistan, if they also had some kind of a discussion on whether the, these Georgian troops might need uh, lethal weapons from the U.S. before they get sent out? Well, I mean, these D Georgian troops are not going to go in harm's way with nothing but, you know, baseball bats in their hands. They're going to be going to, to Afghanistan with lethal weapons. That's a different question from whether the United States will, will supply additional weapons to Georgia to keep within their country. I am sure that will come up in the discussion. I would be very surprised if it didn't. I can't tell you sitting here in New York how that will be worked out. This has come up before. It came up during Vice President Biden's trip to uh, Georgia last summer. So it will almost certainly come up. I would be, again be surprised if it were resolved in Tbilisi between Holbrook and Saakashvili. Okay, uh, but you know, when uh, Barack Obama first came into office, it seemed like the relationship with Georgia might end up being something that stays a little bit on the fringes. But now it looks like it's coming back to the forefront. And how much of this could be because of both Vice President Joe Biden or Richard Holbrook himself, uh, who have pretty close relationships with Mikhail Saakashvili, or part of the fact that Georgia spends a lot of money lobbying uh, here in Washington? Well, the, you know, the, the relationship, but the United States and Georgia have been allies since before President Obama or President Bush or President Saakashvili ever took office, right? This relationship goes back to the days of, of respective presidents, uh, Shevardnadze and Clinton. So there's some continuity here that we're talking about. The sense in Washington when uh, President Obama took over was that Georgia wasn't going to stop being an ally. But the relationship, as you said, was going to be on the fringes. I would prefer to use the words on the, on the periphery. It wasn't going to be an A-level uh, issue on the day-to-day -day, uh, in the foreign policy of the United States. And I think it still is not at that level. Clearly, it is, it is um, in the interest of Georgia to remain an ally of the United States, and it is in the interest of the United States to have Georgia remain an ally. So that's not really up for grabs. The intensity of that relationship, the degree to which personal ties, the personal ties are there. The degree to which they're going to influence policy outcomes, that's still to be seen. Uh, okay, but do you think that part of the reason that Georgia is the only country that's sending, well, the highest per capita amount of troops to Afghanistan is part of a desire on their part to cozy back up to the, to the U.S., to the Obama administration, since Bush isn't in office anymore? Um, it is... 
an effort on the part of the Saakashvili administration to create a climate where the state of Georgia is demonstrating that they are doing something helpful for the United States. It's very clear that the United States is doing something helpful for the state of Georgia because we offer, we provide a great deal of assistance to that country. So I think President Saakashvili would like to create an atmosphere where there is at least some, uh, some help going both ways. So again, I wouldn't use the term cozy up, but it's, it, he doesn't want that to be lost on President Obama. I would extend that to all of NATO. Obviously, NATO membership remains a, while perhaps not a short term, but certainly a goal of, of Georgia's. This is a way that they feel that they can show that they, they deserve to be in NATO. They can contribute to security concerns of NATO, to efforts that NATO is doing. And uh, do you think that Barack Obama is in any way that he has to choose one or the other between Russia or between Georgia since, uh, well, the two do not exactly get along? I don't think that President Obama and the Obama administration is thinking it about it that way. We have a pretty sophisticated foreign policy operation here and we can have relationships with countries that don't get along. We have good relations with Pakistan and India. We have relationships with Saudi Arabia and Israel. I mean, so, so we certainly can have relationships with two countries that, 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 that don't get along. There are obviously things that, that would jeopardize that relationship on both sides. There are things that we would do with Russia that would make Georgia furious and things, things that we would do with Georgia that would make Russia furious. And I think the administration has been pretty good about trying to keep this balance. Uh, right, except for the fact that I think Georgia's a little furious that they're not getting military or that they're not getting arms anymore from the U.S. and, the, you know, Russia is actually preferring that. Isn't that right? Yes, and I would, and I would, I think that analysis is, is, is right. Georgia would like to get the arms. Russia would not like, would, is happy that Georgia's not getting the arms. The United States isn't giving them the arms. I wouldn't call that a causality. I don't think we're not giving the arms to Georgia because we're, because Russia doesn't want us to. I think, on the other hand, Georgia is getting an awful lot of assistance from the United States, and that's something that should be reckoned, that is, that is recognized in Georgia as, as something that the United States is doing for them. So this is all about balance, and I think, Obama and his administration have done a pretty good job of balancing all of this. All right. Uh, job uh, oh, and I want to thank you for joining us. I guess we shall see how the balancing act continues as it turns out that uh, Richard Holbrook is on his way to Georgia at the end of this month. And there are a lot of questions as to what.